This NFL mailbag is presented by Manscaped. So if you're 69 years old or if you're just trying to get some, you can go to manscaped.com slash chat where you can save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products. Now, every single Monday, we do a live mailbag, and we ask you all, hey, get your questions in by using hashtag NFL, or you can super chat. And I got a super chat to start this show off, Harrison. Jason Wolf, what up, my man? RW3 heard... He was an MVP candidate and stopped playing good. Does Seattle have any chance against the Rams? Go Hawks. Considering the Rams just lost to the Jets, yeah, Seattle at least has a chance, Everyone right? A like, chance. of course they have a chance. Uh, I think it'll be a good game. I, I still think the Rams are a good team, even though they lost that game uh, to, the, uh, to the Jets this past week. Russell Wilson's fine. Yeah, he's out of the MVP race. Maybe that's better. Don't worry about it anymore. It's over. You're not winning it. So uh, worry about playing your best football at the right time. Josh Gordon should be uh, playing in this game. He's been activated to the 53-man roster. Bingo. Excited to see what he does. Uh, this is a big matchup in the NFC West, Mitch, because winner will probably win that division. Super Chat coming in from Emil Peterson. Most underrated player this season, Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz has been a nice find for Dallas, only in the sense that coming into this year it was like, free Blake Jarwin. It's Blake Jarwin, SZN. He gets hurt uh, early on in the season. Schultz has been solid. Now, I don't most think he's – underrated I, I, player? I, 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 no, he's not the most underrated player in the NFL, but he's been a sleeper type of player for Dallas. He's been a good find. Uh, and those are the type of things you got to find solace in when you're when you have a bad year like Dallas is. Is hey, what are some guys that uh, weren't expected to be good actually turning I mean, out good? I'm going to throw out names like James Robinson. He's yeah. done a hell of a job for the Jags. I mean, One of the better UDFA, UDFAs in a while. Miles yeah. Gaskin. I mean, he was a player in the seventh round. They went out and got guys like Jordan Howard, even Matt Salvin Ahmad. The he's, other he was great he too. This ran like week. a buck thirty or whatever. Yeah, one twenty two and a touchdown. I mean, those are the first names that come to my mind personally. But hey. If you disagree, go down in the comments. There's some good day know. three draft picks, like Darnell Mooney with the Bears has had okay. a solid season. There's been some uh, some solid finds. Schultz has been good, but most underrated, a bit of a reach. Christopher Zermarietto. Mitch, do you think we can get Allen Robertson? <laughs> this is free agency. Um, well, I don't know who Allen Robertson is, but Allen Robertson from the Bears, he is a phenomenal wide receiver. He is my number one guy. When I look at some of the other options, like a Chris Godwin, Kenny Galladay, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, the reason why I want Allen Robinson, he's going to give you everything he's got on every single play. Plus, he can also block, which yeah, he does. I know we talk about passing all the time with the Raiders, but that's a run-first team still with that offensive line with Josh Jacobs. I would love Allen Robinson. Great hands. He's dealt with inaccurate quarterbacks for a while, so he's got that wide uh, that wide frame. He can catch uh, a lot of balls that most people would say are uncatchable. <laughs> Get going with Manscaped on that one. Uh, I love Allen Robinson. I'm curious to see how the Bears finish this year because if they finish strong, maybe he gets back on board with this Bears franchise who he's been pretty frustrated with. Although, be it quietly, he's a pro. He's not going to be like OBJ and some of these other guys. Uh, but he's frustrated that he hadn't gotten an extension. But if they finish strong, he might be in Chicago. All right, y'all. Make sure you guys subscribe to Chat Sports today, right now. Do it. I got your attention. Subscribe to <laughs> Chat Sports if you're looking for the latest NFL news. If you're looking for today's rumors. If you want mailbags where we're interacting with our live audience like Jacob. Dude, Jacob's been here for like 20K. So Legend. I got Cortez in here. I got Joseph Morrow. If you want a channel that genuinely cares about its viewers and gets you guys on the show, go ahead, hit that big red button that says subscribe, and don't miss anything. All right, this one's coming in from Alex Caldwell. Get a picture. Are the Seahawks winning the West now? It's a great question, and I'm going to say yes. I think they're the favorite. I mean, it really, it, as weird as it sounds, the Rams losing to the Jets doesn't mean a whole lot. Exactly. Like, it comes down to who wins this game. Now, I think Seattle will win this game and ultimately will win the division because of that. Um, I just trust them more. Yeah. I trust Russell Wilson more than Jared Goff. That's what it comes down to for me. I think the Rams have a better defense, but it's all about offense in 2020. If you can't score, it does not matter. And the NFC's fun this year, man. Like, you look at this, Mitch. I think between Green Bay, New Orleans, Seattle – the Rams, and potentially the Bucks if they can figure it out. All those teams, if they're playing their best ball, could make a run to the Super Bowl. Yeah. My only issue, I'll disagree on, the only team that I don't agree with there was the Bucks because they haven't really been playing. They're a distant team there. Yeah, they really haven't been playing as solid a football. But, I mean, when you look at this NFL Week 16 matchup, it's really going to come down to, I, I really think that whoever wins this game is going to end up jumping the Saints. 
they're playing up and down football, and yeah. I don't know if they're going to win their next two games where I think the winner of this game is going to go on to win their next two games. Okay. But you could also make the argument that – being the fifth seed isn't a bad thing because you're going to go up against the team from the NFC East. In Washington or New York, most likely. Yes, it's the home field advantage. But is it actually a home field advantage with you know COVID? Yeah. I'm not 100% sure. But you do have the Rams going up against the Seahawks. The Seahawks are favorites in this game. And, yeah, whoever wins this one is going to end up winning the West. So who's going to win the West, Harrison, Seattle or the Rams? I think it's Seattle. I'm typing my SEA. Go ahead and get your votes in in the comments. I, I I think the Rams are much better than the team they showed last week against the Jets, but I'm going to vote with Seattle here. I think they win on Sunday and win the division. I'm with you. I'm going to go with Seattle as well. Alan Gomez, the Eagles will get the best draft. I have no idea what that means, Alan. I guess have the best draft. They'll have, they'll draft better players than anyone else. I, I wouldn't be very con- – I mean, Jalen Hurts has worked out. We'll see what ends up happening it, with It's very Hurts. early. <laughs> but – um. Yeah, I actually did not like what the Eagles did last year. But, Alan, it sounds like you're an Eagles fan. If you are, please go check out our Eagles channel, youtube.com slash Eagles now. Jacob Williams, what up, my man? Now that the Jets have the number two pick, will they take Sewell, and where would that put the Bengals? If they end up with the number two pick, they're in a precarious spot because I still think at this point I think you, you, have, you have to get a quarterback. I don't think you can go with Darnold moving forward, his fault or not. I think you shop and see how much someone's willing to pay for that pick. If you can get three future firsts, I think you do it. In a heartbeat. <laughs> Honestly, I, mean, I, I, I think the gap has widened between Lawrence and Fields at this point oh where my gosh, yeah. I, I'm shopping that pick if, I, if I'm the Jets because it's not like they're just a quarterback away. They have a lot of issues. So if you can stack up on some high picks, I think that might be the way to go if you're the New York Jets. CJ DeYoung the third. what's up with the Beards, fellas? You know what, man? I, I try to be looking good, and luckily with Manscaped, they're, they have – you know, changeable razors. I know we always talk about taking care of your downstairs. You change the blade, and you can also take care of your face. Like, I literally shaved my face on a Raider show to prove to you all it how well it works. Can't so, confirm. are you hairy? Why for yes and for no? You can't answer this because you are technically hairy. Yes, I am. In, in more ways than one. In more ways than one. I wish, though, I could grow out a beard like Harrison. Mine doesn't grow like that. It just starts getting kind of fugly. I've only found this out in the last year or so. I think during Corona, I was like, ah, just YOLO. Like, F it. Just, just going to let it go. <laughs> and I, I like it. And the wife likes it. And happy wife, happy life. And uh, that's the perfect transition into Manscaped here. Let us know why for yes and for no. Because uh, the ladies, Manscaped's important, right, Mitch? Oh, absolutely. I mean, not only can you know have a great beard, but if you want to be looking good down there as well, the Lawnmower 3.0 is by far the best product on the internet to get it. And we're hooking you all up with this awesome holiday deal. Manscaped.com slash chat. I'm going to say it again because you're going to find it in the description and in the comments. Manscaped.com slash chat. 20% off and free shipping. The reason why the Lawnmower 3.0 is the best product on the internet right now for, you know, keeping your downstairs clean. Yep. You can use it in the shower. Mm -hmm. It's got an eight hour battery life. And when you're actually using it, it's not going to like tug on you. You're not going to cut yourself. No razor burn. Absolutely nothing. I'm telling you, it is an unbelievable product. And Manscaped's got all these unbelievable products. So to Jeffrey, Sanaa, Seahawks fam, all type in their y 3 for your Harry. Guess what? Manscaped.com slash chat. Let's get rid of that hair. All right, we got Jacob. What's up, brother? Who are some buyer beware free agents? So honestly, the first name that comes to mind for me, I like D Bud Dupree a lot. However, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to look at his production on a very good Steelers team, and he's coming off an ACL injury. We'll see whether or not he's fully healthy. But if I was somebody, you're going to pay for Bud Dupree what he's done in the past. Is he going to be that same exact player coming off the injury and on maybe a lesser team like not the Steelers? That's the guy that I'd be afraid to play. How about it, Yon Yannick Ngakwe? Really good player. Do you want to pay him $100 million? Fourth team in five years. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think Baltimore would like to keep him, but sure. are they going to pay top dollar? I don't know. Like How about this one? Dak Prescott. You're going to pay Dak Prescott $40 million there, coming off that ankle injury. I'd be shocked if he wasn't tagged. Okay. I think he'll be tagged again. I don't think they'll commit long-term, especially with the way the Wentz thing has played out in Philadelphia. <laughs> I think Jerry's like, I'm tagging his ass. I'm, I'm not giving him a long-term deal. So we will see. Those are a few names to keep in mind. Hey, we'll talk free agents all off-season long. Another reason to be subscribed. Super Chat, Joseph, do the Bills bench starter 
against Miami. It so. depends on, uh, yeah, week 17. Obviously, Josh Allen, You may maybe you want to rest him there. But you I, know, am, I, I am don't never think so. team rest because I, you always see what happens. Like, we'll go back to the old playoffs where, you know, those two teams get the first round by. One of those two always comes out flat. Dude, like, if you're the Bills, keep it going. Don't take a week off. Like, you are playing phenomenal football right now. Keep your starters out there. Keep it. I, I think Allen's such a rhythm guy, too. We've seen him be kind of going these ebbs and flows throughout oh, the yeah. season. He's on a heater right now. <laughs> play play the hot streak. Keep it going. Uh, I'm with you. And, and plus, he, you might be able to get that number two seed potentially if yep. Pittsburgh loses again. So, I could keep it rolling with Josh Allen. And they have the tiebreaker. You, you can't play scared. I, it, look, you can get hurt anytime you practice. Like, it's just the nature of the sport. Like, if you get injured, it's just the way things play I always out. bet the over. Exactly. <laughs> All right, FYI, Phil, <laughs> I wish I was this happy. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat here. It looks like your caps are on. Where will Richard Sherman play next year? It's a good question. He's going to be one of the top free agents, but for somebody who's over 30, definitely not in the prime of his career anymore. Obviously, you got to be looking for some teams that are cornerback needy. I don't know if he's the top cornerback available. I mean, he's definitely not the top guy in the secondary. I'll take Justin Simmons, but... I wonder if he transitions to safety. I know we always cliche do that with like players late in their career, but he's got the size. He's six three. He's Definitely not. He's never been enough. a super fast guy anyway. Like I think it could make sense to slide him over to free safety the later half of his career. It does sound like San Francisco's not going to be not going to bring him back. Yeah, it, it, it seems trending in that direction. So we'll see where he goes. How much longer does he want to play? Coaching's probably in his future as well. So maybe a team signs him to a two year deal, and then he retires. We'll see. So where will Richard Sherman play in 2021? What are you thinking? Oh, man, there's a lot of different options you could go. I, I'd be curious to see some guys like, uh, honestly, I, I can see the Colts would be fun. I don't know if they're going to bring back Malik Hooker or not. So I, I, I'm trying to think of a team that could be in this, like, win now type of mode. I know a lot of Raider fans have asked me, will he go to the Raiders? I personally don't think it's going to happen. Now, if he wants to play safety, that's a totally different option. I know this year has been a disaster. What about Dallas? Dallas would be fun. I mean, they could use corner and safety help. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know. Where will he play? Let us know what you guys think. Gundy Wundy, how is this trade for the offseason? The Steelers trade Deontay Johnson and a second rounder of the Dolphins for an early first. The Steelers can take Najee Harris and Mac Jones in the first round. So Deontay Johnson and a second rounder of the Dolphins for an early first. I, I I'm not say, doing that if I'm Miami. Yeah, I would never do that if no. I was Miami. See, the issue is... Dolphins have four picks in the top 50, so they have a lot of needs. But Deontay Johnson, he's probably their third best pass catcher at that point. And if you're Miami, like, there's a lot of really talented wide receivers that I would rather take a shot on. Also, Mac Jones may not go in round one. Yeah, I actually Najee think Harris he will. may not either. I wouldn't, take, I wouldn't take him in round one. So, I have Travis Etienne as my number one running Yeah, back. so you may not even have to do that, Gundy. So uh, I, I get your point, but A, the Dolphins aren't doing that, and B, those might be round two prospects. So uh, got to see how the combine and all that stuff plays out. Zornel Malone, Super Chat. I believe you mean Lovey Smith for the Raiders defensive coordinator. I, I, I've i seen this name floated out there a lot. I've already done a video on my That's top ten Paul Gunther replacements for those of you that might live under a rock. The Raiders, they moved on from Gunther, and if you guys want to be able to check out my top 10 candidates for that position, it's at our Raiders YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Raiders Report. My thing is, Lovey Smith was bad at Illinois. I just don't see why the Raiders are going to go out and bring in him. I get that Gruden likes veterans, but there's 10 other names in that video that you can see would be I'll say a couple options. of things. One, Lovey Smith, not a college coach. I, 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 I thought that was a weird fit from the beginning. Two, there are reports that that's what he's angling for to return to the NFL as a D.C., I think it's more likely he's like a secondary coach for a year, and then maybe he can be a D.C. job. It's been a long time since he's yeah. run an NFL defense. So I'm kind of with you. I think he needs to work his way back up, probably as a position coach first. Obviously, we get a lot of questions on these NFL mailbags, so if we missed it, I'm sorry. You can blame producer Sam. But, hey, if you have a question about Raiders, NFL, fantasy football, hit me up on Instagram. I'm at MitchellRens365. My DMs are open. Also, slide into my man Harry Graham's DMs on Twitter. Always open. At HGrahamNFL. So if you uh, need some tips on how to use Manscaped products or if you're asking anything about Chiefs, Bears, NFL. Just like Joel Embiid. The DMs are always open. <laughs> oh At HGram NFL on Twitter. You can find me right there. All right, we're going to go to another question here. If Gregory Russo falls to the Raiders, should they get him? 
I'm not 100% sure if he will. I know Tom's really, really high on Gregory Russo as an edge rusher. It's definitely a need for the Raiders, but obviously defensive tackle's a need, safety's a need. But if they keep losing, my answer to this is going to be more likely because I believe Russo's going to be a top 15 pick. Yeah, he didn't play this year, opted out. So uh, we'll see if that hurts his draft stock. Obviously, the testing will be important. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's one of the top defensive uh, players in this year's draft. So it'll uh, be interesting. This is going to be a weird year for the draft because a lot of big names opted out. Sewell, Micah Parsons, Russo. So... I'm fascinated to see how, you know, some of the top draft experts uh, rate some of these guys. All right, we got uh, one more question here, and then we'll move on. Jeffrey Militzer, who is the best GM candidate for the Lions? Best GM candidate for the Lions. Best GM candidate for the oh, – gosh, I know they're interviewing Lewis, Lewis Riddick. Riddick. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's the name that has been brought up the past two cycles. Um, it's tough with GMs because do teams want to bring back – like John Dorsey, do you want to bring a guy that's been here – been a GM twice in the last decade who has kind of burned out at a couple of places, but he's proven that he can do it, or do you want to get an up-and-comer type? That That's kind of the question you have to ask yourself if you're an NFL franchise. I don't know what the Lions are going to do. It didn't work with this last regime. <laughs> I mean, Bob Quinn wasn't a good fit. Patricia was a bad head coach. So I, I, you got to find the right guy. That's I hate all playing I'll the say. narrative that certain teams are unlucky or bad at doing their thing. The However, Lions are one of those teams. The Lions just <laughs> feel like one of those teams. But, hey, if you're a Lions fan, go check out our Lions channel, chatsports.com slash Lions TV.